Hey bag maker, I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everyone, welcome to Social Sunday. Thank you so much for joining me for the show. As you can see by the empty chair, my husband Danny will be joining me on set in just a minute. I see Joyce is watching from Florida. Mary Jo, you guessed correctly, Danny will be on the show tonight as well as the Bag Lab segment. Uh, Andrea's watching from Ohio, and Isabel's watching from Canada. So thanks for joining me. Um, everything that I'm scheduled to talk about, which is just a couple of things, I link to in the description. So if you're interested in, um, I have a couple of cork fabrics and a few other notions or tools. Those are linked to in the description, as well as since tonight's Bag Lab, um, I have instructions for submissions for Bag Lab. So if you have a question that you would like me to answer in greater detail, as opposed to the live questions, which I am sort of answering off the cuff and generally less detailed responses, um, the instructions for Bag Lab submission are in the description and you can email your questions directly and I save them in a folder in my inbox and uh, we have Bag Lab every two weeks and so I've um, slowly been running through the Bag Lab questions. So in Chicago we've been having some up down weather I suppose you could call it. So yesterday was about 60 degrees and sunny. Today was extremely windy and tomorrow we're getting snow. So the snow just melted so we're getting more snow so yay for snow. <laughs> Hello, Danny. <laughs> Give me a second to navigate through over here. <laughs> yeah. All of the sewing uh, room mess. I, I need to do some cleaning. I feel like I've said that recently. So I have not taken care of the straightening up yet in the sewing room. So need to take care of that. While Danny's getting situated, I wanted to share quickly a couple new cork prints that we received in the shop. Uh, we're still waiting to get some more hummingbird cork fabric that sold out rather quickly but I thought this one was super cute um, this one's a bulldog print and then I got another one with sort of purple paisleys and butterflies so I did you guys see the bulldog print that was <laughs> when I saw it, I was like oh that's such a cool print did you see the little details put it up one more time sir okay okay the other one's okay but well, that bulldog one I'm like man that one is so cool there's like, such fine details in the bulldog itself which yeah, is really cool. There are a lot of details in that one, so very interesting. I, when I first saw that print, I was like, you know, it's very breed specific, so it would be cool if there were um, eventually other breeds, but uh, we'll see what they come up with over at the cork manufacturer. Um, I wanted to post a picture on the screen. I got an email last week from Lauren, and she sent me, since we were talking about storing acrylic rulers, Lauren uses a baby bottle drying rack to store her rulers and she keeps it on her desk. As you can see, it has extra room in the front for other tools and notions. This is what the original baby bottle drying rack looks like, but I thought it was a super cool idea and not specifically originally for sewing, but um, it makes a great use in the sewing room for, as you, as you saw, tons of uh, rulers can be um, stored in there. So thanks so much for emailing me your pictures, Lauren. And then my bag lab uh, topic for tonight is sewing standing up. So Danny helped me prepare a video earlier. Let's see. Sarah, hold on. You can't just jump into <laughs> stuff like that. You got to slow it down. <laughs> Missy says we should have a soul sweetness community cleaning day. I feel like that would keep me accountable for cleaning my sewing space. That's an amazing idea and I also shared let me look through my past outlines I think it was a couple weeks ago yes um, the Instagram account feel good fibers if you are an Instagram user every Monday she posts uh, a Monday reset so a topic for something to organize in your sewing room for example vacuum the floor of your sewing space so if you're interested in that type of stuff and you use Instagram, again, the account was Feel Good Fibers. Um, okay, is it okay to get into okay. that? Okay. It's time for Bag Lab. All right, so we pre-recorded this video, but 
while you're watching it, if you have questions about sewing standing up, feel free to type those in the comments and I'll answer as many as I can directly after the demonstration. Today's question for Bag Lab comes from Beth Ann and Beth Ann says, you've mentioned several times that you are predominantly sewing while standing up. It would be great to see your machine set up as well as how your foot pedal is stabilized. It would also be interesting to know why you and others sew in this position. So this is my regular sewing machine position. Granted, normally my machines shifted slightly to the left, but uh, I moved it over just because um, our camera angle here, this was the best capture for that. So my sewing machine is positioned on top of an Ikea kitchen countertop and the countertop is resting on table legs from also from Ikea and I'm five foot two inches tall and so this particular configuration um, feel like it suits me pretty well so this is how I would be standing to sew. My foot pedal, my foot pedal down here um, this is where I'd be pushing to sew and then I'd just rock my heel back um, at the back of the pedal because that cuts the thread on my machine and I use this product from Steady Betty. It is a wood covered with foam on both sides and it makes it non-slip. And so this is my positioning for sewing. So if you can see my foot down here, as I'm sewing, I'm just um, pushing that pedal down and then to cut the thread, I'm just rocking my heel backward. And in this particular positioning, most of my weight is in my left leg. And then I'm sort of resting a little bit of weight on my right leg as I'm pushing down to sew. Um, the reason I like this position is because I do a lot of work at the computer and so when I'm sitting in my computer chair I tend to kind of hunch my shoulders over and I wanted a little bit of a different positioning for sewing rather than sitting down in that same positioning that I'd be at my computer I feel that standing up to sew um, helps my posture a little bit because um, actually when I am sewing I am thinking about my posture kind of keeping my back straight rather than be, being hunched over um, there are some adjustable height tables that I've seen that can either rise or fall depending on what height that you need them to be and I think um, that might be a really good solution for a lot of people because obviously people are different heights. Um, I kind of wish we had room in the studio for a table like that but this is our filming setup so this works for us and in fact um, this works for me when sewing. So. If you have a different setup for sewing, let me know in the comments. I'm curious to see how other people are sewing and also keeping in mind um, their health and their posture. So uh, drop a comment below and I'm curious to see how everyone else is sewing. Okay, hey everyone. So, so that was my, that's really every day how I sew. I've been doing that for a couple of years now. My Actually, my trainer for horseback riding originally mentioned standing up to sew rather than sitting down because my I'm still working on my posture for riding, but um, it's certainly a lot better than it used to be. Um, Laura says, I sew standing up and my other leg hurts a lot. You have that problem? I don't have that particular problem, but um, I did want to mention for sewing standing up if leg pain or leg strength is an issue, perhaps sitting down uh, might be a better option for that. Okay, so Danny's um, second favorite part of the Social Sunday show, when he's on the show, we'd like to invite all of the bag makers to stand proud. Let us know in the comments that you're part of the So Sweetness squad. Uh, Danny and I are both really grateful that you're here for the show, whether you're Thank tuning you so in much, live yeah, absolutely. or if you watch later on in the week. So Every comment, every mm -hmm. thumbs up, every um, everything you do interaction-wise, really, I notice it. I look at it every week, and I uh, appreciate it, everyone participating. All right, so we're going to get over to your pick of the week now. Well, my pick of the week is... Drum roll, please. Oh my gosh, I'm draw I'm gonna look her name uh, really quick. This is the Promise Ring backpack. She made it with. Uh, I'm gonna put up one more time. Cause it went by pretty quick. Oh, 
Okay, Danny's gonna go look up the name. Usually he lets me know so I can write it on my outline, but for some this reason that didn't happen today. Um, it's the Promise Ring backpack made with Harry Potter fabrics, and each backpack was themed for the different houses at Hogwarts. Valerie. Uh, Valerie, thank you, Danny. Valerie did an awesome job. I love their creativity, and there's a lot of projects that I see posted in our So Sweetness Facebook group where I look at the picture and I think, oh, why didn't I think of that? That's a really great idea. So I thought that was awesome. That's something you'd see like at a store. Yeah, for it sure. It was so cool. Yeah, real, and for sure nobody else will have a backpack, anything like that. I thought the so. towel was such a cool idea mm -hmm. down the center with the, yeah. the uh, house colors. Super duper cool. Yeah, super amazing. All right, so we have plenty of time for live questions. So if you have a question for me, you can type it in the comments right now, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube. Before we get over to the questions, I wanted to announce the winner of last week's giveaway, and that winner was Winifred Gill. So congratulations to Winifred. Please email me after the show so that I can get you set up with your prize. And my email is sarah at sosweetness.com. Uh, happy, happy anniversary to you, Gwenna. Congratulations. Um, do you have any cat designs? Um, Cork. Oh, cork. Um, actually, we don't. So far, we don't have any. But um, I'll write that down as a request for to check with the manufacturer. Um, Alex says I share my sewing space space with my hubby, his office. He lets me have the majority of the space, but I but in exchange, I try to clean up clean up after every project. Wow, that's very ambitious. Cleaning up up after every project. I wish I. I could do that because I know the sewing space would be um, a whole lot better organized. And I think that's the same case in this room with me and Danny. Danny has a small corner and the rest of the room is all of my sewing things. Robin yeah, I'd probably have like 10% or less, I would guess. Yeah, I, I would say that's about right. Um, Robin says, I love your no new hole punch tool. Works great. I'm so happy that you're enjoying it. It's uh, I feel like it's relatively inexpensive. It's a hole punch tool that you can use uh, in place of a hole punch tool on a rivet press. And it's just a handheld tool. Um, oh, Angie says, can we please see the Harry Potter again? So fabulous. Love those backpacks. Even the inside's super cool. The zipper. Mm -hmm. Really creative. Mm -hmm. You know, I saw much people commenting about do they sew barefoot or not? Um, if you guys mm -hmm. sew barefoot, put it in the comments. It's really interesting. A few people already said they have, and others have said that it's very difficult to sew barefoot and they don't care for it. But it's interesting to see somebody. Sarah, you don't do that, do you? I could if I had to, but I kind of like walking around the house wearing some form of slipper. I have like three different pairs of slippers. So, um, yeah, I like having something on my feet. Um, Winifred says, not a question, but awesome. Thank you. Um, congratulations again on your prize. Uh, it's really exciting uh, awarding prizes every week on the show for sure. My order came so quick. Uh, smiley face, heart. Uh, I'm so glad that you received it quickly and safely. We This year we started shipping out of our new commercial space and it's in a slightly different location, and so the packages generally go through a different distribution center than they did before. So I feel like, fingers crossed, um, a lot of them are progressing quicker than they used to at the old space. Pat says, I find that one thing that stops the auto cleanup is there's always a project waiting, that's for sure. Projects or UFOs, um, yeah, definitely. I like this comment from Brenda. Brenda says, I do sew barefoot with the pedal to the metal. Yeah, <laughs> love that. <laughs> yeah, I love that too. Because I, sometimes I, when I did sew my one project that I completed, uh, I tried it to sew extremely fast. And unless it's a straight line, which my project was not, it's not easy to do. I know um Well, and you're, you're, a pure, you're a pure beginner, so that's understandable. No need for name calling. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was your first bag project, so it's understandable. Sheila says, is there any material that you've sewn with that you would never sew with again? Um, let's see. I don't think so. I, I've had a relatively good experience. Well, Peltex, that crap paper one. 
Oh, craft tux. Oh, craft tux. Uh, craft tux I sewed with once for a demonstration, and it just wasn't my style. But yeah, I guess that's I guess that's one of them. Thank you. Good memory. Lorraine says I have seen too many pins pulled from feet in the ER. Oh gosh, that sounds extremely painful. Yikes. <laughs> Nancy says, do you think a computer lift would work or hold a sewing machine? Definitely. Yes. Well, they usually have weight ratings. So if you're looking at oh, um, yeah. a standing desk, if that's what I think you're, you're speaking on, you're going to use the weight of the desk itself and top of whatever it can hold. So, so if it can hold 250 pounds, you minus the weight of the desk. And a general computer, I would guess, would be 20 pounds. Rough estimate to get exacts. I'd look your specific computer up or go like on Dell's website and look for a similar one. And they usually have like a shipping weight. And then it'll give you an idea to give you a more accurate uh, account. Hmm. Um, Chris says, do you use quilter select rulers? How do you think they are for not sliding around? I don't, but I think someone might have recommended on a previous show. I just haven't picked any up yet, but I'll write myself a reminder. Charlie says, you don't like to sew with naked foam. Oh, I don't. Uh, we periodically get questions about the naked foam. So the difference between naked, it is actually called naked foam and um foam meant for sewing with or making bags with is generally foam interfacing has a thin layer of fabric on top and bottom which makes it easier to glide through your sewing machine the naked foam is the pure foam by itself without those thin layers of fabric so what happens with the pure foam or naked foam is it can often get caught on the feed dogs and drag along on the feed dogs so what that's like while you're sewing is uh, you're kind of not going anywhere. It's almost like running in place. You're just not going anywhere. So it's very trying. I know the naked foam is a lot cheaper, but it's a lot cheaper for a reason. And I, I think um, in general, it causes a lot of headaches. Um, corduroy. I have used corduroy fabric on a couple of projects. I made a couple bags for my first book, Big City Bags, with corduroy fabric designed by Anna Maria Horner. And um, I found it nice to sew. It's just a little bit thicker. So when you're adding in all the interfacings, um, just be mindful of that in general. And obviously there's variances in the thickness to the corduroy fabrics as well. Do you want to see that one next or do you want to go with this one? Um, I didn't see the first one you showed me, but... Oh, sure. <laughs> there's a few comments about this. Karen wanted to know, can you tell us about the new puppy? So I'll let you... That's something you can answer, so I'll let you uh, Yes, talk we about got a new minute. puppy. His name is Mikey. He's a standard poodle. He's black. <laughs> He's super awesome. He's starting to bite a little bit, so I make sure I got a muzzle on him at all times. Just kidding. He doesn't use a muzzle. Um, he's been a great puppy. We had a little scare because we do have allergies. We chose him because he's hyperallergenic, but we still found with our allergies that it bothered three out of four of us. Dogs, dogs still have allergies because it's yep. in the saliva also. Mm -hmm. So we went to an allergist. They got us working up on a plan, and we're sticking to that plan. So far, it's helped us. Sarah will be going Monday for her plan, and um, hopefully... That's why I'm sort of like, you know, low-level coughing a little because uh, my asthma, but we're getting it under control. So he's a very good dog, Yep. very kind, and uh, feels like he picks things up pretty quickly, wouldn't you yeah, say? Yeah, he knows how to sit. It's giving paw now. Mm -hmm. Violet is so excited about the paw, especially. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Jackie says, when making a bag and you're using a multiple colored fabric but has a main colored background, what kind of thread would you use? That's a really great question. So, again, it depends on the colors. If you, you mentioned there's a main color background, if you feel that the color thread matching the background won't overpower um, or stand out too much. Would be black or white would be a neutral. Um... Or even gray, right? Depends on the color. A lot, yeah, a lot of times if I don't have a close match to a thread color, say purple or orange, matching the color in the fabric, I'll try to go with either a white or a slightly off-white thread. I don't often use black thread unless there's a lot of black in the fabric because a lot of times if there's not enough black in the fabric, that black thread will really stand Stands out. Up. And unless your top stitching is, I mean perfect uh it's kind of noticeable like uh yeah I, I generally like my thread colors to blend in a little bit rather than stand out um elizabeth says please help one of the strap tabs on my park sling backpack pulled loose when i was snowshoeing 
Should I have sewn over that piece several times? Um, you should be able to unpick it, maybe make an opening through the zipper pocket and rather than unpicking a large amount, just unpick the area where that strap tab was. You can go ahead um, and sew a couple times in that area. And instead of just sewing over the same area several times, you can sort of stagger it. So maybe sew over where the original seam was, maybe sew an eighth of an inch away, sew um, close to that, maybe two or three lines of stitching. Um, and that should help reinforce it, that area. I think I might have seen people mention, actually, I don't want to say because I'm not 100% sure. I don't want to say something on the show and have it be wrong. Angela says, add simple bed risers to lift tables, great for inexpensive dining tables for cutting. Bed risers, that's a really great idea. I've seen those actually before. They're like squares. <laughs> It's interesting. Sarah says, I'm allergic to puppy saliva, but once they're grown up, it goes away. Oh, that's really great to hear. I also read that because it's a standard poodle, their coat starts to change when they're about nine months old. And so that can have an effect also. So um, speaking of the puppy saliva, I always make sure to wash my hands after I... Someone else said use distilled water in the morning to wipe mm. them down. Um, I always make sure to wash my hands after I play with him, especially if he licks my hands and I, I make sure to wash those right away. Terry says, after he has bathed a few times, you should feel better. They have dog shampoos for pet owners with allergies. Um, we started using this uh, liquid on him every day. It's called Allerpet, and our, our vet said it was okay to use that as well. So um, we'll see how it goes. It seems like out of the four of us, I'm the one that's uh, having a slightly harder time than the rest of the family. Jean says, love to see you have thread to match your cork fabric. That is an amazing idea. I'm going to write that idea. down. Laura says, I'm 99% uh, certain I'm allergic to my dog and cat. I use Flonase and Zyrtec. I'm also an asthmatic. Allergies and asthma run in my family. The same for me. So that's one of the things they, um, I'm on Allegra and a, a nasal spray. I don't know if it's Flonase, but something similar. And I started uh, allergy drops instead of shots, which is pretty cool. Um, Sarah and I at one time were going for allergy shots. Then the pandemic hit and we stopped. Um, but now they have the local allergist here uses drops instead of shots and you get a, like a little vial of it. So I'm pretty excited about using that and helping with my seasonal allergies and my other allergies that I have. Cause I, William and I, since he was tested recently, we actually hit every category in the allergy test. I guess there's different subsets in the categories, but we're in every single category. Like grasses, trees. So yeah. Molds, you name it. Molds, Cats, dogs, um, dust, mites. dust mites. Yep. There's a lot of other things. When I yeah. first got blood tested, my doctor was like, you're allergic to cockroaches. I'm like, well, that's good to know, and hopefully I'll never have one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure Let's what this see. one. Um, Elizabeth says, what quantity should you order? Is that cork, maybe? Perhaps cork. So we sell the cork fabric in two different size pieces. The smaller size is 18 by 27 inches, and the larger size is 18 by 54 inches. And um, for... For smaller projects like pouches, the smaller size of the cork is good enough. If you're using it for straps, accents on a bag, even a small to medium bag, the 18 by 50, 54 inch piece might be big enough. For instance, I made a Baker Street bag out of one of those 18 by 54 inch pieces. Um, it was kind of a tight fit, so I drew all my pieces on the wrong side of the fabric first before cutting to make sure I had enough. but. Um, if you're ever unsure with quantities of cork, you can always email me and I'm always happy to help. Um, can you put my email on the screen or do you have it on sure your little can. pad there? There it is. All right, you can put that. I noticed there was a comment that you had up there. Thank you. Alex says, tip for raising tables. I added wheels to the legs of a dining table, so now my table is the perfect height and bonus easily movable. Very clever. Cool. I would definitely suggest if you do the wheels, like the cat, I think they're called casters, you get the ones that have locking on there because if you're sewing or in a position and it moves around, it'd probably be pretty bothersome. Uh, but if you have locking ones, usually you step on, it's got a little, a little flap that you step down and it locks the wheel in position. It'll prevent from moving or while you're cutting. Mm -hmm. 
Look forward, sir. Thank you. Amy says, we do allergy drops at the clinic I work at, and people generally have really good success with it. That's great to hear. That's I was, great to hear. Uh, especially for the kids, they really didn't want to do so many shots, which is understandable. I don't think my kids would prefer to do shots at all, but because yeah. once we got the dog, we found we had allergies, they said they'd be willing to do it. Um, but when we found out it, it was a dropper instead, it worked even better in their benefit. And I, I also wanted to mention we did, we've been investigating getting a dog since last summer and we did our best with due diligence, meeting a few poodles and we didn't have any reactions at the time. Um, obviously the reactions came a few days later. And so, um, yeah, we, we did the best we could, but there's not exactly a service that lets you rent yeah, out, take a dog home, take for... a dog home for a week and then give it back. So, um, why do I sometimes have bobbin thread showing on top and top thread on the bottom? Which way to adjust top tension? Um, I don't recall off the top of my head. You are correct. You do need to adjust the tension. Um, if someone's watching and has this information on hand, let us know in the comments. Danny will try to look uh, for your comments so we can post it up on the screen. I do have that sewing machine book that I reviewed again a few weeks back. Let me see if I can find it in my outline. Let's see. You and Your Sewing Machine. It's an excellent book. Um, it contains a lot of helpful information for domestic sewing machines. Um, adjusting tension is just one small bit of the book, but um, again, highly recommend it. And if you're interested in seeing my review in case you missed it, that was from the June 30th, 2022 show. And again, the book is called You and Your Sewing Machine. Cheryl says, my daughter's allergic to air and a professional poodle handler. Um, keeping them bathed on a weekly basis and brushing will help. Yeah, my daughter wanted to brush, but we have one. Uh, maybe it's not the right type. I'm going to have to do some more research on what's the correct brush for a poodle. Gloria says, I got my cork order so quickly in spite of my typo on my zip code this week. So glad your software caught it so I could get it without delay or getting lost. Thanks for your email, Danny. I'm assuming that's one that you took Yeah, care. she sent an email on it, and when I checked on it, um, it automatically corrected her zip code to match the correct awesome one. Awesome news. Mm -hmm. Carrie says, I have an old machine that breaks the thread when I start sewing. I change threads all the time. Um, what can it be that keeps breaking? I think someone saw, I think someone mentioned recently, um... Well, changing your needle, if it's an old or dull needle, I think that's a possibility for breakage. Um, hmm. If there's other suggestions besides that, besides changing out the needle, let us know in the comments. And again, we'll get that posted up on the screen. Barb says, start with adjusting the top tension first. Thank you very much, Barb. Linda says, Juki Junkies has a great video on adjusting tension. If you happen to have a Juki, Uh, Laura Beth says, do the frames for the chickadee require any special tools? That's a really great question. So the chickadee backpack has a metal frame at the top of the bag. So basically you sew the entire bag together first and then, <coughs> excuse me, um, while sewing the bag together, you create sort of a casing for the metal frame. So the frames just slide in at the end and you can actually take them out in case, uh, for instance, you need to slip the bag into the washing machine. And all I did with my metal frames, they come with little rubber tips on each end. And before inserting the frames, I just remove the rubber tips, put some permanent uh, glue inside, and then replace the tips just so they don't accidentally, um, it's possible for those little rubber tips to pop off. And so uh, gluing them in place just makes them uh, permanent before inserting them in the bag. Elizabeth says, uh, so you should draw the pattern pieces on the back of the cork. Should you reverse the pattern pieces? Um, that's just what I personally do just because I like to be economical with my pieces. And by drawing them out first on the wrong side, if I am unhappy with how I've spaced the pieces, the pattern pieces out, I can always redraw them as opposed to if you're cutting out your pieces from the cork one at a time. Um, then you're sort of stuck. Um, what was the second part of that question? I'll Sorry. Go back to it. Okay, thank you. You can answer this one as you're going. Um, Jennifer says, think of tug of war. If bobbin thread shows up top, top is pulling too tight. Um, 
If bobbin thread is shown on top, it's your top tension. If the upper thread shows on the bottom, it's your upper thread. Is this the way you're talking about? Uh, no, that I don't think it was. Step. Sorry, I don't remember. Maybe I'm mistaken. <laughs> is it the cork reverse pieces? Yes, that's... Should you reverse the pattern pieces? Um... A lot of pieces are cut on the fold, um, so there's generally no need to reverse them. Uh, what I do for pieces that are cut on the fold, instead of actually folding the cork, because that can create a crease, I usually draw one of the pieces and then flip it over so you get the mirror image and then just draw the second piece on the other half rather than uh, cutting it on the fold. Chandra says, have you used the flatter pressing spray? Yes, I, I like flatter flatter pressing spray it's a starch alternative and I also like best press um, I've used both at my ironing station before and I like both um, about just as well Mary Ellen says regarding thread breakage make sure that the take up lever is all the way up before starting to sew using the hand wheel new machines stop in this position automatically thank you so much Mary Ellen um, Laura says, I no longer use Facebook. I wish there was an alternative for the So Sweetness Facebook group. There is a slight alternative. That's our Discord group. It's probably not, it's nowhere near as active as Facebook, but it is a place you can go and speak with other people. You can post your projects. Um, that is in our link. Um, in the in, description? In the description. Okay. Yep. And it's also, you can actually talk live. Yeah, it's got. As well as, as, well as typing. Absolutely. Um, when you cut cork for straps, do you cut the length 54 inches so the straps aren't pieced? Um, you could do that, or if you have um, either a shorter piece of cork or you need a strap that's longer than that, you could potentially piece the straps. And I do have a free video on my YouTube channel, How to Piece Cork Straps, and I'll show you how to do that so you get less of a bulk area where you're sewing that seam. Diana says, to stop thread from breaking, start with your needle in the highest position so it's going to go down as you start. When you put the chickadee frames in, Sarah, some mm -hmm. mentioned, do they move around after you put them in the bag? Do they move around? Uh, I don't think I've noticed that they've moved around. I guess it's possible, but the, the channel, the fabric channel that they're going into is, I mean, it's not super tight, but it doesn't give them a ton of room to move around. And there's also sort of a flap of fabric on either end that would also kind of restrict the movement. Um, I certainly would never expect the frames to just pop out on their own, nothing like that. Get your questions in quickly, because we are out. I missed your question, I'm sorry, but I, I've, I think we're all caught up. <laughs> all right, well, not a bad thing. We got all the questions answered for tonight. So um, one last thing to get to tonight is the giveaway. So the giveaway prize is, I have another box of Orifil thread. These are all, I think they're all black threads. Let me pull this out really quick. Oh no, they're all neutrals. A black, white, and a gray thread. There we go, the camera picked it up. So um, this will be for one randomly drawn winner and it will be drawn from all of the comments on this show um, compiled compiled from Facebook and YouTube. And you have until the end of the day this Saturday to leave a comment on the show. Um, I have an extra question for you that you can answer in the comments for an extra method of entry. And my question is, what is your favorite city? So let me know in the comments. You can go ahead and type that in right now. What's your favorite city? Um, I don't, the easy choice would be Orlando, but I want to go with... Um, Nashville. I really enjoyed visiting mm -hmm. there. Um, a lot of cool stuff to do. A lot of mom and pop stores and restaurants. And it was a fun place to be. Yeah, Violet and I were talking about this before the show. And I think we both agreed Orlando because we love going to Disney World. That was William's answer too. Was it Was it really? I'm yep. not surprised. So thank you so much for joining us for Social Sunday. We hope you have a great week and happy sewing. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone.